Hello. So, it's been a couple of days because I recorded a few um, gingerbread stories back to back. So I haven't done this in a while. And in case you haven't noticed, Miss Rafferty cut her hair. Just her bangs. So if you Google what is the number one thing not to do during quarantine, it's probably cut your bangs. But I did it anyway. I think it's okay. I don't know. It's kind of weird getting used to it, but oh well. Don't cut your hair. Okay, so here is, I should have read this on the Friday before um, Easter, but I didn't really think about it. This is called The Matzah Man. It is a Passover story. The Matzah Man by Naomi Howland. Okay, so another version of the wonderful gingerbread stories. Um, let's see, I probably have about eight left. The matzah man. So before we go on, matzah is a, it's kind of like a cracker. It's a bread and, um, it's very thin and flaky. Um, and they make it for Passover. Um, I'm sure they make it other times Jewish. It's a Jewish, um, tradition and a Jewish dish. Um, and it's just a flat, crisp-like bread. It's the only bread eaten during the eight days of Passover. Thin little cakes are formed from flour and water and pressed together. And anyway, so this is what the gingerbread man is going to be made out of. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. Whoa. I'm going to try to get out so that you can see the pictures better. <clears throat> and still be able to see the words. Okay. Inside Mr. Cohen's bakery, the racks were filled with Passover matzah. The baker rolled out his last scraps of dough. He added a bit here and a pinch there and shaped a little man. He pricked the dough all over, popped it into the oven, and closed the door. So this is all the matzah hanging in the back. Um, I guess it has to kind of dry before they put it in the oven to bake, to make it that thin, crisp um, texture. These are big sacks of flour that they use to make it. Mr. Cohen was busy cleaning up when suddenly he smelled the matzah, almost burning. He hurried to the oven door and opened. But the minute he did, that piece of matzah jumped out and said, Hot from the oven, I jumped and ran. So clever and quick, I'm the matzah man. And off that rascal ran, round the sacks of flour, between the legs of the baker, and right out the door. Stop, matzah man, cried Mr. Cohen. And he began to chase the little matzah man. the village they raced. A red hen spied the little matzah man crispy and crackly running by. The matzah man said, hot from the oven, I jumped and ran. So clever and quick, I'm the matzah man. Stop, matzah man, clucked the red hen. You would make a tasty treat for my new chick 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 chicks. Matzah man looked at the red hen, stuck his nose in the air, and said, I've run from the baker, whose matzah is best, and canoodle, canoodle, canoe, I'll run away from you, too. And he went pell-mell over the fence. Cousin Tilly was sampling her tender Passover brisket, when, a toast, when the toasty little matzah man rushed past her door, the matzah man teased her, saying, Hot from the oven, I jumped and ran. So clever and quick, I'm the matzah man. Stop, matzah man, called Cousin Tilly. You'd be the perfect mouthful with my delicious brisket. So a brisket is a kind of like roast. Um, it's meat, and they cook it for a long time, and it gets real tender and juicy, and 
you just eat it up. I think you could almost eat it by itself. It's probably so delicious. Oh, here they go. The little matzo man waggled his finger at Cousin Tilly and said, I've run from the baker, whose matzo is the best, and from the little red hen who left eggs in her nest, and canoodle canoodle canoe, I'll run away from you, too. And that little scamp raced down off the road. Auntie Bertha was out shopping when her brand new shoes. She saw the crunchy matzo man running right toward her. The matzo man said, Hot from the oven, I jumped and ran. So clever and quick, I'm the matzo man. Oh, please, matzo man, cooed Auntie Bertha. You would just look adorable on the Passover table. She's very fashionable. She's got all purple on. The little matzo man made a rude face at Auntie Bertha and boasted. I've run from the baker whose matzo is the best and from the red hen who left eggs in her nest, from old cousin Tilly with a brisket filled pan and canoodle canoodle canoe, I'll run away from you too. Hmm, it's not very nice being a little bit rude there. Boasted is another word for bragged. I think we heard that in another story. Maybe it was the gingerbread girl. I can't remember for sure, but I know we've heard it before because it's they're like bragging that they keep escaping. And he scooted around the corner. There he is. There's a line of people chasing him. <laughs> Grandpa Solly was chopping onions for his special Passover gettlefish. The onions were making him cry, but he could still see the matzo man through his tears. The matzo man said, Hot from the oven, I jumped and ran. So clever and quick, I'm the matzo man. Stop, matzo man, cried Grandpa Solly. You'd be a delectable nosh with this ghetto fish. So I'm thinking nosh must mean a, a nice um, pairing or a nice side dish to go with my fish that he's making. And sometimes when you chop onions, the, the scent of the onions kind of makes your eyes get watery. The little matzo man put his hands on his hips and bragged. I've run from the baker whose matzo is best, from the red hen who left eggs in her nest, from old cousin Tilly with her brisket filled pan, and big Auntie Bertha in high heels she ran, and canoodle canoodle canoe, I'll run away from you too. And he sped across the bridge. Axelrod was dropping the last matzo ball into her chicken soup when the brown little matzo man ran past. He shouted, Hot from the oven, I jumped and ran. So clever and quick, I'm the matzo man. The little matzo man had such chutzpah. He said, I've run from the baker, whose matzo is best, from the red hen who left eggs in her nest. From old cousin Tilly with her brisket filled pan and big Auntie Bertha in high heels she ran. Then Grandpa Solly from onions he's crying and canoodle canoodle canoe I'll run away from you too. And zippity zip away he went. So chutzpa is kind of a funny word. Um, it is I believe a Jewish word and it kind of means the same thing as bragged or boasted, chutzpah, meaning he's got some nerve. A gray goat was pulling tender young radishes out of the garden when he noticed the tasty little matzo man. The matzo man stamped his foot and said proudly, 
Hot from the oven, I jumped and ran. So clever and quick, I'm the matzo man. Stop, matzo man, bleated the goat. I would like to have a bite of you. The little matzo man laughed and said, I've run from the baker whose matzo is best, from the red hen who left eggs in her nest. From old cousin Tilly with the brisket filled pan and big Auntie Bertha and high heels she ran. Then Grandpa Solly from onions he's crying. And from Miss Axelrod, matzo balls a flying. And canoodle, canoodle, canoe, I'll run away from you too. And he hurried past the goat. And there they all are. Chasing them down in the corner. Somebody got a bike. I think that's I think that's Grandpa Solly riding a bike. Let me go back and look for one second. I don't remember him having a bicycle. Oh, there's the bicycle. Didn't even notice he did have a bicycle. Well, I guess he is kind of a an elderly fella. Might be helpful to have a little bicycle to roll around in. Oh, we could have saw right there. Just at that moment, young Mendel Fox came to the door of his house. What a commotion! Mendel Fox. Fox. Fox is his last name. Oh, goodness. Mendel saw the little matzo man running down the road, chased by the gray goat, Miss Axelrod, Grandpa Solly, Auntie Bertha, Cousin Tilly, the red hen, and Mr. Cohen, the baker. The matzo man looked back over his shoulder and panted. Ah, ah, from the oven, I jumped and ran. So clever and quick. Oh, I'm the matzo man. Stop, matzo man, Mendel said. I'll help you. Hide behind me. The matzo man flattened himself behind Mendel. <laughs> They're getting closer, Mendel shouted. Hurry, get behind the cushion. The matzo man covered himself with the pillow. I can still see you, cried Mendel. They're coming up the steps. Quick, hide here. The matzo man jumped up onto the table and slipped beneath the matzo cover. This would be um, Hebrew letters that probably says matzo cover. Or it might say something in reference to Passover, which is a holiday that they... Um, bring out special things for You can see the tables all decorated nice and fancy and neat. Mr. Cohen looked around. Did you see a little piece of matzo run this way? He asked. Mendel shrugged. Miss Axelrod peeked under the table. The red hen picked up the cushion on Grandpa Solly's chair. No one could find the matzo man. So, one by one, the tired guests plopped down in their seats. Let's begin the Seder, said Mendel. He handed his grandfather, Grandpa Solly, his grandfather the plate of matzah. It's the same one. Grandpa Solly reached under the matzah cover. Snap! The matzah was broken. plate was passed around the table. Tasty matza, said the goats between bites, said the gray goat between bites. Now the horseradish was making Grandpa Solly cry. Must be some onions in that horseradish. He nibbled a piece of matza, so crunchy and delicious, he said through his tears. The best matza we ever ate, agreed Cousin Tilly. Auntie Bertha and Miss Axelrod. The red hen pecked at her matzah, crook, 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 crispy. 
and Mr. Cohen smiled. Everybody ate pieces of matzah except Mendel Fox. He had two pieces. And that was the end of the matzah man. So he got eaten in the end. This is the glossary. So it is not a nonfiction book, but it is a book that needs a glossary. Glossaries don't have to just go in nonfiction. They can go in um, fantasy and regular um, informational, nonfiction, fiction, any kind of text really, just to tell you what some words mean. So in here it has the words gettle fish, and it tells you what it is. Matzah, that's where I was reading from. Matzah balls, matzah cover, Passover, Seder, and Yiddish. Oh, okay, here it says, Yiddish is spoken by many Jews. Chutzpah, no, chutzpah, ooh, I said it wrong. Chutzpah means bold. It's a Yiddish word, not a Jewish word, so Yiddish. Chutzpah, chutzpah. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the story of the Matzah Man. Um, I'm going to, again, of course, ask you if you liked it. And I'm not sure what question I'm going to have with it. I try to put some new questions so it's not the same thing. Um, so I will type it in the assignment before you listen to the story. That way you can know what to look for. All right.